and welcome. My name is Diane Papageorge, and I'm here with Amy Stevens, my very first yoga instructor 22 years ago. 22 years ago, I found Amy, a brand new yoga teacher in a um, corporate uh, boardroom. That's where she was holding her meetings her uh, classes and she did teach at the rec center and she did teach um, mentally challenged adults in one of those classes, if I remember correctly. Um, but we were both pretty new to yoga uh, and uh, it was a really a great friendship right off the bat. Um, when you then started your own yoga studio in St. Charles, Missouri, uh, it was one of the very first studios in the whole county. And uh, I remember that because uh, you were the first one to advertise yoga. Um, and then 16 years ago, you moved away and you went to Arizona. But you were teaching at private homes, in gyms, I remember that. And uh, also, from what I gather, four years ago, you started your own Zoom classes. And it was for people like me who live far away from Phoenix and also people that were on trips and anybody that uh, wanted to hook up one of your classes. So you literally have transitioned four years ago to virtual classes when everybody else is doing that right now. So my first question to you, because this is such a, gonna be such a great conversation and we get to reminisce about our yoga days, is how did you get started in yoga? Yeah, hard to believe. I was in my early 20s and in my interior design career, it was impossible. It was crazy with how in school they don't teach you about time management in regards to, oh, you only work like nine to five or eight to five. So I went to my very first yoga class with a girlfriend and we laughed, we giggled the whole entire time. It was insane. I, I was that student. <laughs> and I think I was too, wasn't I? I, I think know. you were. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah. And we, we, we moved through it. We did rather well. We did out an eight class card. And then beyond that, then I kept going and I started driving 45 minutes one way to go to the studio because there wasn't anything nearby. But my interior design career just had me so incredibly stressed out that I did not understand what was going on. I just, I didn't get it. And I literally, one time after I drove 45 minutes one way to get to the studio, and then I did the practice for 90 minutes, and then I got in my car afterwards, and I sat out in my car, and I just cried. I just absolutely cried. It was one of those situations where I thought, what is wrong with me? What's going on? And that was my big aha moment that, wow, I really love this practice. I really love how I feel. It's better than therapy for me because I'm feeling it and moving it through my body instead of talking about it. So it was, uh, that was my first experience. So gosh, that would have been back in 1994. 94, 95, Ooh. somewhere in that range. Can you believe this? Where does the time go? Well, when I first met you, you were 26 years old and you were doing headstands and uh, splits and back bends and all kinds of crazy stuff. And now you're doing gentle yoga. Explain that one to me. So gentle yoga, it's a variety of things. So between, um, between slowing down mentally so gentle, being gentle on yourself instead of having that hardcore practice where how we used to practice all the time, hardcore practice where we were doing those vinyasa flows and chaturangas and push-ups and <laughs> all kinds of fun stuff. What I have transitioned to over the last, probably the last five years in particular, is slowing down, slowing down the practice, slowing down my mind, getting more connected to how my body feels. Um, I still have great flexibility, but I am not um, as thin as I used to be. And because of that, that does have some restrictions, which isn't a big deal for me. I, I love it. Um, but it's more of a therapeutic, uh, 
practice. It's quiet. It's um, giving the, my body the opportunity to, to loosen up at a slower pace instead of pressing myself too hard. And if you think of a, a wet towel and how often during the day you just feel yourself kind of all twisted up and tight and trying to release and relax, for me, when I'm creating new programs, at my desk, which I've been doing a lot of these days and <laughs> creating content and getting on my mat. When I get to turn on the camera and make these videos, it helps me to center a lot more and I'm able to relax and let go of the process. Well, you know, 22 years ago, I too was a lot younger and uh, I'm an elementary art teacher so um, and I brought in quite a few teachers with me because we need some yoga after we teach all day and yes it, we could do that we could definitely um, do the harder yoga and probably needed it you know um, now that I'm retired um, I have done some of your virtual classes and boy you know, I remember being in your class and you would, you would say something ab about just one part of your body. And I would think in my head, how does she know what I'm thinking right now? How did she know my shoulder, blah, 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 or whatever it is. And you can still do that over a computer. It's amazing. It's amazing. So my question is, how do you do that virtually? Well, it's, it's interesting. My my way of teaching, you know, they, they teach you in yoga teacher training to set up your lesson plan, to have your theme, and to teach your practice. Well, one thing that I realized early on was that I could not teach back bends in an early practice because who, who does back bends on a daily basis? Like that was, that was brand spanking new. It was not something that was an everyday practice for people. So I learned very quickly that I had to improvise my teachings. And so I gave up doing lesson plans probably five months into teaching because it just was making me frustrated and I started adapting, probably wasn't even that long, but started adapting and I instead began to read the room. So as people were coming in, our conversations would help me to understand what they experienced throughout the day. I remember that. What, I remember you asking us like, uh, you know, so what's going on today? How are you feeling? That's how yeah. you started. And, and even with um, like your facial expressions when you would come in or how your body posture was, you know, I started to just understand what that meant about reading, reading somebody and understanding what that was about. And so the, it's now what I understand is a gift of mine to be able to understand what somebody's thinking, feeling, experiencing within their own physical body and their mindset and even their emotions, being able to, to understand that. And what really changed for me though was because, you know, I was more hands-on when I was younger. I was doing hands-on adjustments. I was starting to pull away from that some. But when I moved out to Arizona, I actually, so 16 years ago now, I actually started stopping doing the manual adjustments because I was working in more gyms. I stopped touching people and adjusting them. Instead, mm -hmm. I was able to give them verbal cues that could talk to the whole entire room because there were times I'd have 40, 60 people in a room. So you have to be able to adjust that. So the words were, were really, really important. And you know, early on when I first started teaching, I used to laugh because on my, on my left big toe, I would put an R and on my right big toe, I would put an L. So I would write with toenail polish <laughs> to help me to be able to teach to the audience, but backwards so that I was mirroring everybody else in the room so that that way, you know, when it was your left, it was my right. And then I just, I had to train my brain to be able to understand how to speak that way. So, and there's days. That was pretty that. tricky. I didn't notice that on your toes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very yes. tricky. 
it didn't, it wasn't there for a long period of time, but it, it was there for a while early on because I, to think that, and I always thought of myself as having a little bit of dyslexia. And so to, to actually put an, an L and an R on my big toes to help me be more supportive to the class, that was a, a huge piece. But you know, there's times in those really early morning classes where, you know, if you if you ever watch one of my my 7 a.m. classes in the library, you'll find me giggling, and it's because I am not awake yet to <laughs> to know right from left. <laughs> I know you used to do some really early classes at uh, in Arizona. I remember those days. Yeah. Yeah. Classes aren't as early these days, so. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you used to get up, teach a class, and then come pick me up at the airport. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. Um, now, I do also remember that when you had your studio, we also went to some workshops, and then you had workshops at your studio. You still doing any kind of workshops with other people? What are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm mainly focusing on workshops with myself, kind of teaching in a specific platform. So for instance, um, just did one recently that was about yoga and essential oils. So the class mm. had four essential oils that they, they worked with in the practice. And then we had, um, I recorded that so that now people can, can purchase that on their own and have lifetime access to it and be able to enjoy that process. Um, I'm getting ready to do some, some workshops online with some other people, but uh, that hasn't come to fruition just quite yet, but it is in the works. Now, would this be on your website eventually? Is that where we'll be able to find everything? Yes, yes. So the, the website, I've rebranded myself back to yogaamy.net. So that's the website, oh, so Yoga Amy. Okay. I kind of veered away from that while I had my brick and mortar, but now I'm back to the, the rebranding. Um, but yeah, there's some really cool workshops that are posted on there already. Um, I have one that's called Happy Feet, and it's all about loosening up tightness in the feet, getting your feet to really root down, using things that you have at home so you don't have to buy a whole bunch of new stuff. It's already stuff that you have at home. I have um, the Yoga and Essential Oils one that I just mentioned. I have a seven chakra balancing for highly sensitive people and empaths. That's a really great program as well. That one is probably the longest right now at about two and a half hours. Oh, wow. um, I also have, um, I, because I've been kind of going back to my roots of interior design and talking about feng shui, I now have a program online that's specific about feng shui and interior design. So that's kind of an interesting piece going back to my roots. And I'm I remember a couple of those, but you, you did those early on too. Yeah. I remember those. Yeah. yeah. And I'm actually getting ready to roll out a whole series that's for free on my YouTube channel that people can see that um, uh, in addition to uh, another location. So they'll go through the whole entire program and it's called 15 Days of Peace. So people who have been curious about working with me, who maybe have been referred to me but not quite interested in paying to work with me, this will be a good starting point for them to understand. Because if you think back to when you first started yoga, you know, it took somebody to nudge you a little bit. It wasn't one of those things that was an immediate situation. Actually, how did you get started in yoga? <laughs> well, um, you know, stressful job teaching. Um, thought, hey, you know, I, I, I wonder what this yoga thing's about, you know. And then, of course, I was a little afraid because even when I was 18 years old, I couldn't touch my toes, which I think you're going to remember this. So I walked in your class and said, hey, you know, how flexible do you need to be in this? Because I can't touch my toes. And then I showed you how far away I am from my toes. And you thought I was kidding because I was joking around. And then you kind of realized uh, this gal can't even come close. You know, you were like so, three feet away from the floor. That was what was just cracking me up, standing up, holding forward. I put my hand on your back and it was like a spring. 
you literally oh, yeah. sprung back up as you were trying to fold forward. And I was like, oh, she's not kidding. <laughs> The only other people that I even see close to that is like weightlifters or big guys, you know, I'm like, uh, yeah, I can't do it. But, uh, you know, obviously I've come a long way, baby. So, um, yeah. And that's ever since then, I can honestly tell you, you know, yes, it takes a few classes to get into it. And then once you get into it, the idea of not having it anymore or, or shall I say, feeling so much better at first that I'm like, wow, this really has something to it, you know? Well, and the, even the other piece to it is, is that for me, the virtual doing all of this through Zoom, I did not want to lose that sense of community. So I had an existing clientele base that met at my brick and mortar. Uh, when I closed the brick and mortar, we all easily transitioned into, into the Zoom platform, which was kind of I wasn't sure how that was going to work out. A lot of my clients are, are over 70 and I wasn't sure how the technology piece was going to go, but everybody caught on so quickly and I absolutely love it. And the sense of community, like what we had at the studio there in Missouri, it was, you know, there were times we went out for dinner after class and oh, yeah. we had the Mexican restaurant just down the street. Well, what yeah. I've been doing for the Zoom classes is, is I open up the class 20 minutes beforehand so people can get on and they can talk to each other. And those who don't want to talk to anybody, they can either come on early and sit and listen, or they wait until the very last moment <laughs> to log in. And, you know, I am rather strict with my brick and mortar about locking the front door and not letting people come in late. With this platform, it gives people the opportunity to show up late. And I don't like that per se. However, life happens. I get it. We're all trying to do the yeah. best we can. And so from the perspective of entering into a practice late, it's not that big of a deal through Zoom. It's actually, I'm getting a lot of really great feedback from that particular standpoint as well. Well, when I joined your Sunday classes, um, I got to talk to all the girls ahead of time and I do my practice in the basement and they all were like, whoa, a basement. Look at that basement. <laughs> yeah, we don't have basements out here. It's I know wild. you don't. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. So that was kind of fun to talk to them about, you know, where I came from and stuff. So, yeah, I feel like I'm part of the little group. You know, yeah, you know, and even just attending once a week, it's great for people to to be able to do that. But what I've really been finding is because again, most of my clients are retired and they're not sure what to do with their time. They're now coming three to four days a week. So now what we're doing is a little competition. It's, it's not, um, it, it's just by words, a little competition. So I have one woman. So the month of, of June had 30 days, right? 30 days in June she came to 32 yoga classes. Oh, that's terrific. And she had privates on top of that. So she has lost weight. She has gained so much strength. She used to walk with a cane. She no longer walks with a cane in her home. She has incredible balance. She does have scoliosis. And so she's actually also observed that she's four inches taller than she was. When she, Whoa. yep. And this is another one of those situations where how do you get started? Well, she told me it took her a year just to show up to the studio. Yeah. Whole year. She knew about the studio. She knew about what I was doing, but it took her a whole entire year just to get comfortable to go into, into that space. And so she's but, got, but now she's going to feel in her body what yoga does to her. And she is not going to be able to live without it. Well, and, and that's another piece. Um, she actually was, was telling me recently that she had a Zoom call with some friends that she hasn't seen in over a year. And they're like, my God, you're smiling so much. Like you just are illuminating. You're radiant. This is beautiful to see. <laughs> 
Oh, that's so, so nice. Yeah. So even from that standpoint, that that's really good. So yeah, that creating that, that movement more than, than they were, um, whether it's in a live class, whether it's on the online library, um, you know me, I'm all about the options and giving people lots of options to take. So, so that I was going to ask you about your live classes, if you wanted to add anything else about that, about the live classes on there. So live classes, um, there's eight right now per week. So they're all Pacific time right now. Um, they do switch because Arizona is not in um, daylight savings. So it, it is based on time zone. So for you right now, you're a couple hours behind me. Um, mm -hmm. Or no, ahead, ahead of you. You're ahead of me. That's right. I'm ahead of you. Yes. <laughs> Um, so the live classes are, are really great. There's, um, I, I have a really great group of, of women and I have one, one man who comes to classes as well. And then we have, uh, the library of classes. So if you can't make a live class, I then have the library of classes. So basically I record all of my, my live classes and then put those into the library. And so people can can come and go whenever they need to with the, the switch up between live or the library uh, and, and really having that, that flexibility from that standpoint. Now, okay, um, two questions for you. One, how's the library work as far as like, do you just subscribe to your uh, website or your YouTube thing and you go right into the library? Is that how that works? So there's several different options. So the YouTube channel that I have, there are some classes posted on there, not, not very many. It's um, just kind of, an, again, a sampling of what it is that I teach. And then there's the online library, which is a monthly fee. And that is everything that I record, I put in there. Um, it is, uh, it's the gentle classes, it's the strength and balance classes, it's the 30 minute wake up classes on, that I have, it's the chair yoga classes that I have. So all of those, plus some, some practices that I did, gosh, I think that that's been about eight years ago that I did a whole library before. So I have some more active practices that are also within the online library from eight years ago. And there are some other meditations, there's um, some breath work that's done on there. And then optional, if people wanna purchase any of the other workshops, those are also available uh, within, within the, the, um, the overview of the library. It's not part of the actual online library of classes, uh, but it's it's within that umbrella. So the library of classes is one fee for the month, and you can go in there as many times as you want. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and and I I I know what chair yoga is. I know what gentle yoga is. I know what meditation is. I know what wake up is. But give me an idea of what the strength and balance one is. Yeah. So actually, the strength and balance class is what I would consider more of my level three practice. So it's very intense. We're doing a lot more cardio in that particular class. We're working with, if you have weights at home, we'll work with weights. In addition to, um, if you don't have weights, we'll use um, cans from the pantry. <laughs> I try to- Bottles of wine. Bottles of wine. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, okay. no, no water or no uh, glass. Yeah, no glass. To... Oh, okay. We'll have to pour them in another glass first. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So from that perspective, yeah, strength and balance is a lot more um, active. The chair yoga for most is pretty active. Uh, we are half seated, half standing in that practice, but the strength and balance is what I would consider to be my, my level three type of practice. The wake And when is that one? That one's Wednesdays at? Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Okay. And the wake up class is twice a week in the mornings at 7 a.m. Pacific time. And that particular practice is only 30 minutes. And we're pretty much standing up for that whole entire time as well. And we'll do some good stretch at the beginning and at the end, and we'll definitely get the heart rate up. So it's a great way to start the day. Okay. 
All right, really good. Um, do you miss your studio? You miss having one? Not really. This is um, this has been working out far better than I had anticipated. So mm. I I'm really um, I'm still able to keep that sense of community going for people, which was really important to me. Uh, but as far as as far as the actual brick and mortar, I, I don't I don't miss it. Great, great. I mean, you know, it's probably pretty convenient for people to open up a computer and there you are. Yeah. And, and that library thing, you can do that anytime you want. So exactly. So I like good stuff. Again, it's all about the options. So that's a that's a big piece that that you know, there's varying stages of my price points. And so I try to be respectful of, of all of those stages. And I'm getting people who are referring me out and bringing in their friends, which is nice. And then they can yeah. introduce their friends to the group as well. So, so that's really good. Well, personally for me, this was the best thing since life spread because I got my, my old yoga teacher back. I, I say that with quotes around it. Um, but I got you back and I'm still in Missouri. So loving it, loving it. I love joining your classes. Well, and everybody loves chatting with you as well. So that there's, there's all of that flexibility as well. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you'll have one person from every state in one of your classes one of these days. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, I don't know. Like if one day you're super tight and you want to take one of your classes, you know that by the end of it, you're going to feel pretty darn good. So that's a really good thing. Um, I yeah, still, I you know, still laugh about me not being able to touch my toes, but you know. Um, so I was, um, going to ask you about the peace thing one more time about what is that you were you um you were saying something about a free series it, yes. it, it's just to get intro um introductions right right so it's called 15 days of peace and that's going to be available uh actually starting on july 6th that that will be um available for people to start accessing um it's come in whenever you want. So they can, they can sign up at whatever point. If you're hearing this and it's 2021, then you can still have access to that as well. Um, but it's called 15 Days of Peace. And each day there will be something special that comes into your mailbox. And then you'll also have the link to then connect into uh, the, the class for the day and there there will be some other things available i'm not quite sharing the whole thing but there will be some other things available throughout uh, that particular day and then the next day you get the next content so it's not something like the online library that i have of classes this is a daily piece and, and so, you have to sign up for it or just when you're subscribing um so this Either. is through my website this is different okay. than the youtube channel um, okay. This is through my website, and you'll see that there's a button that says 15 Days of Peace. And okay. uh, from there, then you can begin to, um, you can begin to gather the information and, and enjoy the ride, because, you know, that's what the, that's what yoga is about. <laughs> it sure is. It sure is. Well, I can tell you, I certainly enjoy it. Uh, of course, you know, it's been 22 years. So um, I just can encourage someone else to do another 22 with you. you know? Great. Well, yes. thank you. Yes. Well, Diane, it's been a pleasure talking with you and reminiscing about our time together. I so appreciate it. Oh, uh, likewise. Yes. So thank you for answering all my questions. Absolutely. Thank you. And I hope it helps somebody else. Yes, Thank I do. Bye-bye. All right. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.